That was on point. All right, we're back. Time for After the Beat. I am Luke Thomas, sadly. Uh, <laughs> there is Danny Segura, and at the end, it's the Ice Band himself, Chuck Bidenhall, Man in the Hat. We have taken your questions using the hashtag #TheMMABeat. We're going to answer them now, but before we take a look at them, Danny, I already asked Chuck. The Chuck's answer to this question was yes. Let's see what yours is. Have you seen Avengers Endgame? No. Oh, boy. Boy, it's going to be a rough show for Danny. All right. <laughs> uh, let's go to the first question. Daddy, you go first. Will Frank Shamrock ever be inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame? Do you want a little inside info on that? I would say, you know what? I'm going to be optimistic and say yes. Yeah? I'm going to say no. Yeah, but probably so. not. Uh, you know, he's had his, you know, it, this is not an MMA Hall of Fame. This is a UFC Hall of Fame. And we know he's, uh, he's had his differences with the yeah. promotion, uh, you know. So I know that they want to give it to him. I, have, I know that it, explicitly that they want to give it to him, but they believe he would not show up, and uh, they don't want to be in a position where they're kind of like in abstentia, right. yeah, giving yeah. an award. So I think they're going to wait till the day where he doesn't feel salty. But, hey, but look, Ben Askren yeah, the grudge is the, the grudge is more with so. Shamrock than the UFC at this point. Yes, yeah. yeah. Well, at least in terms of uh, Dana White has like let a lot of grudges go, where like Dana and Frank will. Never ever shake hands, right. but like if Dana was like, someone's like, all right, dude, can you please let in Frank Shamrock to the goddamn Hall of Fame? Right. He'd probably be like, yeah, all right, whatever. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. I uh, agree. Uh, but do you think, am I wrong? No, I think that's, I think, was the question, will he ever get in? Will or he ever get in? I think he will eventually, but, yeah. but it's going to have to, it's going to, they're going to have to thaw that out, yeah. man. I, don't, I still feel like it's, uh, you know, those old wounds or whatever, whatever the whole story is. You probably have more insight into what went on, but um, the, the whole thing still seems very active to me. Yeah, and then also after the dog abuse stuff where he's leaving a dog at the airport. Well, that's horrible. You know, so it's like, even if they gave it to him now, all the media's going to be like, that's so true. you leave any that's dogs true. from the airport on the way here, you know? <laughs> Usually that's when the UFC does this, though, when it's so timing yeah. it's worst. I can't believe they didn't <laughs> sign to a fight. Death is what you know? they know, man. Yeah. All right, next. Uh, what is something you didn't like, Chuck, at first, and it took a while to appreciate? Music, a show, even a sport, anything. Anything you sort of liked over time. Man, out of everything? Out of anything. Um, Pick anything. Good anybody beer? Anybody want to go first? Good, good beer? That's a good, yeah. I would say that IPAs, I know your favorite, are, yeah. that's something that I, I, I did not opposite. like. I did not like. And then over time, when they kind of evolved, the different hops, yeah, you know, yeah. all that stuff, uh, I grew to really like them. So I would say that's certainly one of them. But I feel like I'm trying to think of something like a sport or something like that, too. You got something? So I, I I was the opposite way with IPAs. I when they you first came like out, it. I'm like, oh, these are kind of cool because you know, <laughs> I got a buzz quicker. <laughs> but then over time, I'm like, nah, this this is not for me. Um, yeah, because they're bad beers. Yeah, I would say I was like that with peanut butter. You're not a peanut butter guy. Well, at first, I wasn't. Wow. When uh, you know, in Colombia, like nobody eats peanut butter. Mm. What do you put with jelly? That's it, just jelly. Jelly on bread. Jelly, jelly and butter. <laughs> butter. Yeah. Toast. Okay. All right. Um, Peanut butter is not big at all in Colombia. I don't know if it has changed now because you know it is something you can put in shakes and you know, uh, oh, right. like protein shakes and whatnot. And you know, we've become I think healthier as a as a culture just in general. Um, but yeah, at first I didn't I didn't like it. But then when I started wrestling in, in high school, that's all they would give out at the gyms. You know, in between matches and whatnot, they would like make like a hundred peanut butter jelly sandwiches. So I'm like, all right, this is what I got to eat. And and then over time, I like you know, it grew on me. Figured out they're pretty good. Yeah, it's not yeah. a bad and one. It's a cheap meal, you know. It's like pretty reliable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's packed with um, packed with nutrients for the most yeah, part. Yeah. yeah. Good fats. Uh, um, anything else? No. I'm trying to think what else. Um, I can't think of anything that's strongly against that it tur- I turned on eventually and liked. Any viewpoint you've ever changed on? <sighs> How about you? You got something? <laughs> PEDs one was a big one for me. Yeah. Um, uh, I won't go into it, but certainly the more I read about that, the more I felt like there was a, a, a discussion that wasn't being had. Um, in terms of foods, I was never much of a picky eater, I don't think. Um, <laughs> it's a tough one. I know that I'll kick myself because there'll be something that's glaring later. There was a time in my life when I was really, this is gonna, it, it was pretentious. Thank God I don't do it anymore. I was like really into wines. But then you get into wine culture, and you're like, I hate all you. I, <laughs> well, I've had, I can't stand it. I've had any stuff of where you peter out on it, like you get enthusiastic, and yeah. pretty soon you're like, nah, this isn't what I thought. Yeah, it was. yeah, that's the way I was with that. Um, beer culture is better. 
Like IPAs are gross and they're the most overrated beer imaginable, but beer culture is cool. I think spirits culture is pretty cool yeah. too. Yeah. Wine culture is awful. Ugh, God. Um, uh, anytime you force the highbrow and all this, I'm like, nah. yeah, and they're like, Pass. we can only call this <laughs> because it's from the region in France which it is made. Eat ass, God. <laughs> gross people. Uh, so yeah, but you know, I still get yeah. hammered off a of Thunderbird. Don't, <laughs> don't think I won't. Mad Dog 2020. I'll never forget. I'll never forget one time I went to a li- headache just thinking about. I went to the liquor store one time. I'll never forget this. And uh, there was these. What do, you, what do you want to call them? Rural, simple people <laughs> in the uh, in the liquor store. And I, one was on the phone talking to the other, and that was a she. And she was talking. She must have been talking to him from the larger conversation she was having. But anyway, the question to the person on the other other line was. Um, <laughs> What flavor wine do you want? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, flavored wine? You know what, lady? You're going to have a good well, night tonight. I know that. The, the wine connoisseur, there's a huge spectrum there then. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. talking about a pretty big range. Yeah, that was pretty. I was just in the aisle being like, I'm, I, was, I think I bought Jim Beam. I'm no better. You know. <laughs> Next. All right. Y'all happy or sad that Colby Covington didn't spoil Endgame oh, for man. everyone? I didn't even notice. Exactly. I got to tell you. Sad. Yeah, Very you, sad. You like that. Dude, when he sits there and does this to everybody, I kind of like yeah, you it. You get a kick out of it. And when you go back to the original one, because remember, he spoiled Star Wars. You're a big Star, Star Wars guy. Yeah, he kind of pissed me off for a minute. But did you get the spoiler first? Yeah, I did. Oh, shit. I did. I was really annoyed by it. And then I was like, God damn, that's so funny. <laughs> and what really was the entertainment was if you got to, because remember, when he, I think it was The Last Jedi he spoiled. When he spoiled The Last Jedi, it came out on the same day as the NFL draft. Yeah. So he was tagging all the NFL draft yeah, stuff. Was, that's, yeah. Just catching, that. just catching bodies yeah. on the block. You understand? <laughs> and uh, if you went through and read the comments, oh my God, the amount of butt hurt <laughs> is impossible to overstate. I, I'm like, I'm really, I'm weird. Like, I, so spoilers. I see that everybody's like, they expect people not to spoil things. It drives on, me crazy. But I'm yeah. sort of like, come on. If you're on social media, people exactly. can treat it however yeah, they yeah. want. I'm like, you know. Yeah, I, I never get I too just, mad on spoilers. If I if I if there's fights for example that I don't want spoiled or any type of show, dude, I stay away from social media 100%. Yeah. yeah. 100%. What's your rule on um, a movie spoiler? Even the Avengers people gave it a week. Yeah. It was a week or so, and then they were yeah. like, yeah, whatever. You lifted the social media. I'm not a there. guy who would go on there anyway. Like, I just don't use social media this way. But, yeah. like, I would probably not go on there and even after a week and talk about it. Yeah. You know, I'm, but I would say, like, as the etiquette, it would be like, if, if I'm thinking about my own personal etiquette, it would probably be something like that. You'd want to give everybody the chance. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be the guy who's spoiling it. But at some point, I'm sort of like, yeah, if, it, if it's you want to be able to talk about it, right? Like, so... If you haven't watched whatever program you were supposed to watch after a week, yeah. you're probably not a diehard fan. So, by the way, didn't that movie overtake the Titanic as the greatest grossing? Yeah, one point two billion in That's a weekend. Insane, Damn, man. We're missing out, in a week. dude. Yeah, it's what it's, it's I'm, I'm crazy. Just, I've never been into superhero movies. Just the uh, Dark Knight series. And I was not into them either, but this was. Let, uh, me, tell, let me tell you, where did you see the movie? Uh, just at our local theater. Okay, so I saw it at one of these like um, theaters where you can pick your seat. Which, yeah. like, are you the type of person... The, with the recliner and everything? Yeah. Um, they're nicer seats. I don't know if they recline. Ours, okay. ours were like that. Yeah? yeah. 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 It's, it's Let me ask like you this. 16 seats. Yeah. Which system is better? First come, first serve on tickets or Ooh. buy your seat? You love to be working because you hate Southwest because you don't want to just be Correct. hanging out on there. So I know what your answer yes. is on this. I, believe, I, uh, I personally believe, and I want this to sway your opinion, yeah. I believe that first come, first serve is for street dogs, <laughs> and organized seats are for human well, beings. Well, I never had a problem with it until they started introducing the assigned seats. And then you're like, I kind of like this, because you can pick, like, if you're going with four people, um, you can then say, we're getting four seats together. Or you can find out ahead of time and be like, we're going to sit two here and two here. I'd rather know, I think, especially for movies like you know are going to sell out and things yeah. like that. Yeah. What do you uh, think? I'm, I'm with Chuck. All right, yeah. all right. So no, I don't feel too strongly about just first come first serve either. But if I had a preference, yeah, I'd like to pick my seats. Yeah, okay. So that's why I'm. At. That's yeah. very much. And every time it has been a success, except for Avengers Endgame. Yeah. The people behind me. No. It's a three-hour movie. Ooh. Yeah. They talked the entire time. Now understand, the last time I asked somebody to shut up in a movie theater, it caused a huge problem. <laughs> so I just can't do it anymore. Plus, it was a bunch of kids, and I'm like, they're gonna tell me to go f off. Then I'm gonna take the L. And they kind of stopped during the action scene, so I was like, okay, 
Here's what I noticed, and you'll appreciate this. Yeah. For the first two hours, they absolutely ruined the movie. For the last hour, they made that movie so much better. <laughs> and you can imagine yeah. why. Yeah. Yes. If you've not seen it, you wouldn't yeah. get it. But if you've seen Avengers Endgame, the last hour, a little bit different than the first right. two. And they were hooting and hollering, yeah. boy, and it was a show. Yeah. It was a show. <laughs> but what an adventure. I, w- I wanted to move seats, but I was like, I, ca- I, I know. can't. I bought this one, and so I'm stuck next to this mouth breather. I, I have an excuse for mouth breathing. They didn't. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to kill him. Yeah. So there you go. All right, next. Now that Denver, Chuck, has made uh, mushrooms legal, which I oh, cannot I believe. One of my buddies uh, was texting me about that. Do you think next UFC event there will help the MMA beat finally unlock the cosmic mysteries of fighter pain, the ESPN era, why BJ Penn still competes, and how Chuck Mendenhall writes so well? Here's my question to you. What is up with Denver that y'all are legalizing just about everything? What is it in the culture in Denver? Man, it's a, it's a mile high in the, in, in the sky. <laughs> There's got to be something. There's a lot of progressive places. The, Denver's different. It wasn't like that when I was growing up, man. It what was, was it like? It was not like that. Um, more, more like just there was a little bit of an Old West feel to it, uh, you know, honestly. And, and a very an, an inferior, inferiority complex about other bigger cities like, you know, L.A. people and all that. Denver was just this little town that you flew over, you know. But now, you know, over the course of time, and I think Boulder, the, you know, Boulder, uh, and some of the progressive communities that basically grew out of that um, probably helped steer that a little bit. And then Denver got very hip very quickly. Um, and I would I would just guess that that's kind of the, the direction of it. it like, the so mushrooms one is a weird one. I didn't even anticipate that. I didn't even know it was... And the polling indicated at the very last minute that it would fail. Yeah. And, and it, it barely, didn't. it was like 50 point yeah. 5% versus 40, you know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I know one thing. I've got plenty of buddies out there who are happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so is there going to be text. like mushroom dispensaries now? Or? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the law entails. It could and it's for recreational. For good, not, is there, no, there's no medical, medicinal... Well, that depends. If you talk to uh, psychedelic mushroom users, they yeah. will tell you that it has medicinal properties. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure they'll say that. But I'm, I'm saying like as far as like... It, you can't go to a doctor and be like, oh... I do, I do not know what yeah. the law calls for. Okay. So, for example, in Denver, you can go to a dispensary... And just walk on in. Yeah. In Washington D.C., where I live, you cannot. But if you have it on the street, cops don't really care. You guys need some mushrooms. I'm gonna be out in Denver. In yeah. A weeks. <laughs> Whatever you guys need. But like, has there always been a bit of a drug culture out there? Oh yeah. Um, I I grew up out there. Went to college out there. Um, you'd go to concerts, for instance, and um, you know, most most I would say that mushrooms. I like you know those types of drugs <laughs> were just about everywhere. It was yeah. very Woodstock even back then. But um, I'm not sure where, you know, the progressive, it's, it's funny that it's emerged on that level as a progressive uh, culture. Yeah. But I think Boulder, honestly, just because people love the idea of Boulder being a college town and it's pretty close to Denver, I feel like at some point those two things just started to intersect. You yeah. Know? Never seen more white dudes with dreadlocks than oh, yeah. Aurora. Aurora, yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of them in general. Um, Birkenstocks and dreadlocks, it is, boy. It's Woo. a lot of that, man. Good coffee, um, though. Good beer. Yeah, yeah. That's another part. Denver has great local beers. Yeah, really good. Denver has beer scene's great. Yeah, they uh, they're micro like their breweries now. There's so many. The whole thing is just so different from when I grew up. Now now that I'm away, it's gotten to be the coolest yeah. thing yeah. you know, anywhere. So, I, but I still I still get back there enough to enjoy it. People in like, Denver get yeah. sauced up. Oh yes, they do. Chilling <laughs> in the cut. <laughs> All right, next. I'm blazing through these. With this being the football season of Champions League comebacks, Danny, oh. what, in your opinion, is the greatest comeback in a fight you've ever seen? Let me set this up. You don't watch soccer at all, do you? Not much. This I has mean, been a the greatest champion, Champions so, League I've ever so seen. There's, uh, so in the, in the finals of the Champions League, it's just one game. But the semifinals, it's two games. Each team plays one home, one away. Okay. In the second leg of each, there have been what can only be described as Liverpool over Barcelona and then Tottenham over uh, Ajax yesterday. Two of the greatest comebacks you'll ever see in world football. Really? Dude, they I were. I saw you guys tweeting about it, so. It was. Uh, uh, Barcelona had a three goal lead, so you had, uh, what you call it, um, Liverpool had to h- hung four on them. And uh, not get scored on. And not get yeah. scored on. And then Tottenham was down, uh, aggregate 3 2, but if they had scored one more, if you have more away goals, you okay. win. And they scored. It was, it was one, 1 0. But then they scored. Well, I'm saying, but yeah, it was 3 2 yeah. aggregate yeah. heading into like. So they had five minutes of stoppage time. When the clock struck 5:01, they scored. Oh my God! Like a sh- for the last one wow. to, to advance, like a shocking, wow. shocking comeback, thrilling to watch. With that spirit in mind, Danny, some good MMA comebacks or boxing too. 
I don't know if people remember this, and if you haven't seen it, I suggest you go to UFC Fight Pass and look up Claudio Puelles versus whatever Brazilian he fought. I remember this was in UFC Chile. Chile. Yeah. Um, Claudio Puelles just got destroyed the entire fight, and he kept attempting this knee bar, knee bar, and kept failing and failing. <laughs> and then last minute he got it, uh, and it was a. And they could have stopped that fight a number of Ooh, times. He was dropped like like five times throughout that entire fight. Uh, that was a pretty crazy comeback that I remember. I thought it, it was it, it was my comeback of the year yeah. uh, pick uh, in 2018. Okay. Um, what are the comebacks we've seen? In what about Yair, Yair Rodriguez? Is, I mean, that, that, was that fight was well. ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, that was just the, the way. Oh, God, I didn't remember that. Yeah, yeah good that, point. That, you know, the way he did yeah, it. Yeah, it was yeah. like the way he did it at the time. It's just kind of crazy. Would uh, Hughes Trig 2 count as a comeback? Yeah, yeah right? I mean, yeah, he, he, got, he got hit in the balls. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, yeah, I would say so. The UFC 117, obviously, I always think back to the... I was there, obviously, for that one. Uh, Anderson Sonnen, Silva Anderson, against yep. Chelsea. Yeah. That one always... Uh, Darren Elkins and uh, yes. Mirsad Bektic. Also, oh my God. John Howard, who's fighting in the PFL uh, this weekend, had a crazy fight with Dennis Hallman. I don't know if you remember. Oh, yeah. God, I don't. Was, where he was losing every single yeah. second of the fight. And I think it was literally like 10 seconds left. He just rushes at him with, with a barrage of punches and knocks him out. Wow. Like, literally like two seconds remaining. What about Wilder? I, it was close, right? The whole Wilder Fury fight, like that yeah, was close yeah. to being a ridiculous something there. But. Yeah, boy, if he had knocked him out, I that know. Been, and then he got up, and I'm like, what? I know. Yeah. Um, he got up like nothing happened. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was the weirdest. <laughs> this week was, you know, how much you want to call it a comeback? Yeah, I guess you could call it a comeback. Um, was um, Corrales Castillo? Yeah. Uh, was the was was the anniversary of it? Was this week? Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that really sort of stands out. I mean, Anderson Silva, Chelsea Sonnen. Yeah. Yeah, Anderson that Silva. one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Oh, uh, Fedor and Fujita. Yeah, yeah. Fujita had him hurt. Uh, and he came back right. and just, you know... And then Rampage Jackson, if you watch the commentary, makes fun of his teeth. <laughs> um, Derek Lewis. Derek Lewis. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. How could I forget? Yeah, yeah those, those are the types that stand out because they were just so dramatic. There, you, you've already wrapped your mind around that this fight is over, and then it switches that fast. I mean, those are crazy, right? Yeah, those are good ones. All right, Next. Who is the most overrated and underrated character in the Marvel comic universe, Chuck? Oh, oh God. See, this is like, so you're way more versed in this probably than me. So probably. overrated. So in the Marvel universe, are we talking about like just the stuff as it is right now in this Marvel universe they're rolling out? We're not talking about, okay. Uh, so overrated would be. I'd say who's overrated as shit. Ooh. The Incredible Hulk. Yeah. He, yeah, he, he comes out of this universe you. like a dud. He's all smart. Sm I don't want to ruin it for you, man. But yeah. I have his no demeanor has changed in this. Yeah, I would. That's a good one. I was trying to think. I, you know, who, and he's a kid in this, but the Spider-Man was yeah. obviously like. I, I, w you always grew up thinking Spider-Man was like this badass, and in this, yeah. he's kind of like this this kid who's learning. Yeah, he's how a bit to of a dorky it. teenager, yeah. right? So I don't know if I'd be able. To I, I, I I thought out of this whole MCU experience. Have you seen any of the Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah. Okay, I thought that. Um, I wouldn't say he's the most underrated, but I thought there's Batista. Two there's two. There's oh, two. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Batista with Drax was uh, was super unheralded. Yeah. I gotta say, Star Lord or who's his name? Chris Pratt. Chris yeah, Pratt. yeah. Uh, Quill. And then um, I think the most underrated is Rocket, who is voiced by um, Bradley Cooper. Yeah. He is just so funny, and so and there's actually way more depth to him if you watch um, Endgame. Um, I loved Rocket. I love yeah. the humor. I love the I love the sardonic <laughs> nature of him. I love I love the fact that he's a thief. You know, and, a, and an S head. I love him. Underrated would be, uh, is her name Captain Marvel? Yeah. I she mean, sucked, though. Yeah, but she kind of shows up and just kind of saves things. She you know? <laughs> <laughs> kind of ruined the movie a little bit, but it's like, I did not find that she was that interesting a character. I did not find that I really enjoyed her presence in the, uh, in the MCU, to be quite honest with you. You watch Lord of the Rings or no? I can't remember. A long time ago. Okay. Yeah. All Why? Right. No, I was just curious because this question would have probably been good for who's overrated and underrated because now that they've had these big wars and stuff oh, yeah. like these Every things, Hobbit they're... overrated. <laughs> no. Every Hobbit. You watch it? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I was one of those guys watching Lord of the Rings. I was like, I hope the orcs kill everybody. <laughs> I, I, I love Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Yeah. You did? Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you love Lord of the Rings, why can't you go watch... Th how far apart is Thor and Lord of the Rings? Pretty far. Ah. Yeah. Because ah. at least Lord of the Rings, the characters, like, there was some magic involved, but there wasn't, like, 
people weren't flying. Yeah, just talking you know dragons. I mean? That's all. Just talking dragons. I don't know. But the dragons had wings, so it explained why they were flying. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're still talking dragons, Danny. <laughs> talking dragons. Yeah. <laughs> Who's guarding all okay, the gold? The hobby. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was like a special dragon. That. Yeah. Yes, it was a special dragon. Do you hear yourself? <laughs> yeah. All right. Fine. <laughs> Maybe I'll get into did it. You I'll, see, I'll, 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 Joe, I'll did see. you see Avengers Endgame? Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah. Who's the most overrated character in Avengers Endgame? Or the, the Marvel Comic Universe? What you got? You agree that Hulk comes out? Hulk comes I out. I do agree. There have been two characters in my life that I wanted to get killed when I was actually in the theater. One is this new Hulk, which breaks my heart because I have the Hulk stuff on my, yeah. on my hour set because the old Hulk was the, you know, the, Lou, the Lou Ferrigno ripping was. arms off people. And then the other one was Kylo Ren from Star Wars. Oh, what an emo teenager. I was hoping Chewbacca would destroy this loser. Rest in peace, Chewbacca. I'm with you on that, too. Uh, no, Chewbacca's still alive. Uh, I, I hated Kylo Ren, crying about everything and being mad and sulking. Fuck Kylo Ren. <laughs> All right, last one. But yeah. I think, I think well, the that actor was, here we passed away. Jordan Burroughs, boys, says he wants to fight one time. That's right, he did. Uh, for this question, let's say that's the case. After giving him time to train, would you give him someone who has never fought, someone who has a decent amount of experience, or someone with a name for more of a if money it's just fight? One fight? One fight. You got a one fight contract. Oh, man, I'd like to see a money fight. Ben Askren, think, ben Askren versus Jordan. Did Burroughs. you see Ben Askren versus? Uh, yeah, I was I there. Every, everyone got on Ben Askren because it's like, dude, Ben Askren did the oh, yeah. ESPN car wash. The day of that he, event, he, he, he knew he was going to get smoked. His pro seat. He knew everything about it. He, yeah. I was watching him even while the, the the previous uh, match was going on. He's just watching. He's a fan. He's a he's a guy who loves wrestling. He was there to support wrestling. Yeah. I feel like I wrote a piece about this, but I felt like people got uh, a little bit hung up on the you know Ben Askren title? got smoked. Well, he did but, get smoked. He got tech. So balls. he got smoked, yeah. but the piece was literally flattering. I was like basically saying, "Hey yeah. man, he came in and people were loving it, and he was you know he made people care. He made it was for a good care, cause. And was, yeah, and he's every bit the nerd as they are. They're all watching this thing and and this community, and that's what I really saw was the wrestling community come together. And I was like, wow, this is really something. And by man. the way, how about all this talk with Jordan Burroughs? Right. I've been interviewing Jordan Burroughs since 2011 yeah. or 12. Yeah. And every time he's like, nah, 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 nah. And now you're finally saying, here's a little bit. It's in no small part to what Ben Askren did. 100%. Falling on a sword a little bit. And I tell you, in watching that, and I haven't watched a lot of them. I know you watch a lot of collegiate wrestling. I know a lot of guys who do. But I personally don't watch that much, much of it. But just seeing him compete and how explosive he was, I was like, man, it did occur to me. I was like, if this guy did MMA, it would be Michael, something. Michael Chandler said on Monday, because remember, they wrestled each other. Yeah. yeah. He said that was the best athlete he has ever competed against, ever. There was, I mean, did you watch it? Did you watch yeah. the, so there was a part where he just takes yeah. Ben's legs out and they go over the, and Ben goes off the, you know, <laughs> off the tarmac yeah. there. I was like, just watching that alone, I was like, dude, can you imagine this guy in a cage? Like, who's going to stop his double leg? Right. Once I mean, he gets on top of you, it's, yeah. a, it's a wrap. So, I mean, I, to answer the question, I would put him in a money fight because I was, I, just because he has in such strength his, uh, his core, like what he's able to do, I feel like that would offset some of the more skilled position, you know, some of the stuff that maybe those guys would have that he wouldn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, who knows, you know, how MMA yeah. is. But I, I would I would favor that. Yeah. If you could wrestle, man, you could save yourself a lot. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, if it's a one fight, why not against Ben Askren? Yeah. That'd be interesting to play it back. But although Ben's in the octagon, he likes to incorporate his wrestling more than anything, right? So Yeah, yeah but also, I mean, Ben... Ben, ben, ben can ben, grapple ben, his ass off. Yeah, exactly. He can ben, grapple. ben doesn't yeah. use it. But Ben has a guard. Yes. Yeah. Right. Ben knows how to use jujitsu in a way that Jordan yeah. Burroughs would not be aware of. Right. Pro probably. Um, I would say that would be the biggest fear for a guy like Jordan Burroughs. And also, you better know what you're doing if you're on the ground <laughs> and you see and not get caught. Yeah. You know, Askren has the MMA experience. He's got what almost 20 fights. Yeah. Uh, he has to have uh, some advantage in the striking as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Probably. But this just goes to show you these worldwide sports with these high participatory yeah. rates, like wrestling, yeah. soccer, weightlifting, whatever. The athletes, the top athletes that come out of that, you can see why they come over to MMA and yeah. just dominate. It's and not it, hard. And at the end of that, uh, that Boros Askren match, um, you know, Askren was kind of jokey, and you know, he tried to kill me, and and yeah. Boros was like, "Hey, this wasn't, this wasn't a joke to me." You know, I, I was going, and I, I I liked hearing him. I was like, it, it just sounded very intense. He's a smart dude. Yeah, I just, uh, and I will say that I I haven't been to a ton of wrestling events that are strictly wrestling. That was a very lively theater. There was about 5,000 paid people in there in that yeah. Hulu theater, and it was, um, 
that community's strong, man. And you, it's kind of cool to see something at the ground floor of that's a core essence of MMA, right? Like you're yeah. watching something that's basically, um, if you have this, you have maybe the most important thing. If you can dictate kind of where the fight takes place and that sort of thing. But to see it all in there and hear people calling out the points, getting mad when it's a two and they wanted four, I mean, it was it was way more intense than I yeah. thought it would be. Here's one of the big differences, too, and then we'll end on this. Uh, Vent like beat the streets. They had Kyle Snyder, yeah. Jaden Cox, Jordan Burroughs, Ben Askren, Nick yes. Soriano. The yeah, list goes on and on. Yeah. Um, these are like like big names. Yeah. I think David Taylor, would he wrestle on the card as well? I believe so. I like For me, it was an introduction to a lot of these guys. Yeah. But hearing the reaction, I like... Uh, a dude. Soriano guy, I was like, dude, the fans were just all... Soriano old. is a hard... Was a, as we call yeah. him in the Marine Corps, he is a hard yeah. charger, dude. He's a super yeah. hard charger. Um, you get A-class competitors. Well, this is less true now, but one of the big problems that had been historically true for sport jiu-jitsu with these pro events, you don't get the A-class competitors. You get maybe one or two, yeah. and then you get a lot of B-class. Right. Not with this one. You got A-classes yeah. coming out for this one. Uh, and so it, there's a real star factor to there it. There was. Um, that it just makes a big, big difference in yep. the end, you know. So, so there we are. Um, all right. Well, Chuck spoiled Avengers Endgame, so that kind of <laughs> ruins it for you guys. But what else is new? He's the new Colby Covington.